We are covering so much RV stuff today. I'm really excited to bring this video to you guys. RV essentials are all the things that you need in your RV, but don't necessarily come with the purchase of an RV. There's a lot of processes like setting up, tearing down, black tank maintenance. I'm gonna show you all the essentials that we carry. And if you're a beginner to RVing, you're gonna have a good idea of what to be thinking about. And that's really the purpose of this video. All good? All right, let's get this video started. Okay, the essential items that we're covering today are in no specific order of importance or cost. And I'm gonna throw in some tips here and there as we're covering specific items. And if there's something that we don't mention that you carry, please leave us a comment down below. Let's start with the water connection. The first thing you're going to need is a water filter. The Camco inline filter is probably the most popular filter out there. You can also get filter kits that provide better filtration. I see a lot of full-time RVers using these. We use an inline filter. It's just personal preference. You're also going to need a water pressure regulator. Campground water pressure can be all over the place depending on where you are. And your RV's plumbing has specs that you need to stay within. Depending on the RV that you have, you may see manufacturer specs rating anywhere from 60 to 100 PSI. I would recommend staying in the 45 to 50 PSI range. There are adjustable pressure regulators and static pressure regulators that are already preset. I would recommend the adjustable version. That way you can dial in exactly where you need to be. And of course, you're going to need a water hose. If you plan on drinking water from the campground connection, consider getting a drinking water safe water hose. Now in recent years, a lot of RV have ditched the rubber hoses and have gone to the expandable and collapsible hoses. They're just a lot easier to store. And I would also recommend getting at least 50 feet of water hose 75 to 100 feet is even better. Something else I want to mention real quick, it's not necessarily essential, but it comes in handy and it's one of these pipe tees. This will allow you to have water access outside without disconnecting all of your equipment in case you wanna wash your hands or fill up a bucket to put out a campfire. Now, depending on the water hose that you get, it may come with some additional gaskets. If it doesn't, pick a few of these up. They definitely come in handy if you have a leak somewhere on your water line. You should also pick up one of these 90 degree fittings. It keeps the weight of the hose off of the fitting on your RV, plus it prevents the hose from kinking. All right, let's jump over to the essentials that you'll need to connect your RV to power. You're not gonna need much. First, your power cord, which comes with your RV, and that leaves us with two more things, both essential. One is electrical protection in either the form of a surge protector or an electrical management system, also known as an EMS unit. Now, this is an essentials video, so I'm not going to get into the differences between a surge protector and an EMS unit, but I'll keep it simple. Just get yourself an EMS unit. They just provide better electrical protection for your RV because replacing an electrical system or even just an appliance can get expensive really quickly. I use the Hughes Autoformer Portable Power Watchdog EMS unit. They also make hard wired options. Now, in my opinion, this is the best electrical protection you can get for an RV. And let me say something, we were not given this EMS unit. I purchased it with my own money because I knew it was something that I wanted in my RV. It's Bluetooth capable so you can monitor the campground's power pedestal right from your phone. It's also got emergency power shutoff for high and low voltage. And that's important because low voltage can be just as bad for your RV as high voltage. The EMS you buy should match the power plug for your camper. For example, if you have a 30 amp camper, you're always getting a 30 amp EMS. If you have a 50 amp camper, get a 50 amp EMS. And with the Power Watchdog, you can purchase and replace the part of the surge protector that sacrifices itself during a surge so you don't have to buy a whole new EMS. Hughes is the only one to offer this. So pick up an extra module when you order your EMS because if you need this, you're gonna need it right away. The next essential power item is what's called a dog bone. It's going to allow you to connect a 30 amp camper to a 50 amp pedestal and vice versa. So if you're a beginner, you might just be asking why not just get a campsite that matches my RV's power plug. The problem is not all campgrounds or campsites for that matter have both 30 and 50 amp service. It actually happens more than you think, but the dog bone adapter will give you that flexibility to plug your camper into a different sized plug. Let's take a walk outside and I'll show you how that will look. So if you have a 30 amp RV, you'll plug your power cord directly into your EMS as you would normally. And then this is 30 amp. Our power pedestal is 50 amp, which we can't plug into. So we'll just connect this to the dog bone and this is the 50 amp connection, which will go to the pedestal. The last power connection essential I'll cover today is not necessarily essential, but it's worth mentioning because a lot of campgrounds have cable or satellite TV hookups. Pick up about 30 feet of RG6 coax cable, 
just in case you get reined in for a night. Okay, let's move over to the sewer connection. You're only gonna need a few essentials here, but the most important thing that you're going to need is a box of rubber gloves. Don't worry about powder free or medical or food grade. Just get something that is six mil thick. Not only do you wanna be wearing rubber gloves anytime you're touching anything black tank related outside of the RV, but they also come in handy when you're doing repairs. Remember, some of us are boondocking and that means limited water, you don't have to waste getting oil and grease off your hands. Next is your sewer hose. I have used the Camco Rhino Flex hose going on six years now. I would recommend this sewer hose to anyone. I would not, however, recommend getting the cheapest sewer hose you can find. This is not a product you wanna skimp out on. In addition to your sewer hose, I would recommend getting one of these clear elbows. It attaches between the end of your sewer hose and the actual sewer itself. It's got four different size fittings and it will connect to most sewer connections. And listen, nobody really wants to be looking at what's coming out of their black tank, but it is important to see if what's coming out is clear or not. And if it's not clear, you need to keep rinsing and dumping, rinsing and dumping until it is clear. This product is a must have. And even though these clear elbows come apart, they still won't fit in your standard RV bumper where you store your sewer hose. And if that's the case on your RV, pick up a bin with a lockable lid. You wanna make sure that you're keeping these separated from everything else. There's two other items I wanna talk about real quick. While they might not be essential to everybody, they could save you some headaches. There's sewer hose supports that allow you to keep your hose going downhill. So everything you flush out goes directly into the sewer and it's not sitting in your hose. And over time, you may notice that your tank seals start to leak a little bit once you take the cap off of your sewer connection. If that is the case, you can get an external gate valve that allow you to connect your hose before you actually open the flow. A lot of people swear by these. I'll put a link down below. While on the subject, Let's just jump over to tank treatments. Years ago, I started with Thetford Aquachem. It did have formaldehyde, which I didn't like, but then it went on a national back order, so I was kind of forced to switch over, and I switched over to Happy Campers. Now, it didn't break down waste as much as I hoped it would, and it will clump if you don't pour it slowly enough into your toilet, but it worked fine. I guess I was just never overly impressed with its ability to break down solid waste. Then one day, out of the blue, Matt from Matt's RV Reviews called me up and said, hey, Ross, I'm going to send you a tank treatment that I helped develop. Try it out. If you don't like it, throw it away. No hard feelings. But if you do like it, spread the word. And this product is called Liquefied. So I tried it. Odor control is great. It's got a really nice orange scent. And the really nice thing about this product is it does break down and liquefy solid waste. So thank you, Matt, after trying this product. It did work for me and I would recommend it. And you can use this on your gray tanks as well. Also pick up a bottle of Thetford toilet seal conditioner and also a bottle of drain valve lubricant. These products help keep toilet seals working properly these are seals you do not want to fail. Okay, so let's face it, the mattresses that come in most RVs are simply put just garbage. And despite all the different types of RVs and the different reasons to purchase an RV, we bought an RV to have some of the comforts of home. Otherwise we would have just bought tents, right? So you're probably gonna wanna change your RV mattress right away. If you're in the market for an RV mattress, we just picked one up from rvmattress.com which is the RV division of Brooklyn Bedding. We have what's called the Brooklyn Aurora Lux. It's a standard queen for the RV. And honestly, we loved the mattress so much, we actually picked one up for our house. The really nice thing about rvmattress.com is they do have all your standard sizes, but they also have the weird sizes that you see in some RVs, like the short queen and the bunk size. And guys, I will be the first one to admit, I was a little weary buying a mattress online, something that I couldn't test out. It will make recommendations on the type of mattress you should look at based on how you sleep. The site is really easy to navigate. They'll ship the mattress to you for free. You have 120 days to try it out. They come with a 10 year warranty and all mattresses are manufactured here in the United States. And listen, if you don't like the mattress, you can order another style or you can return it within 120 days. You can click the link below or go to rvmattress.com forward slash RV tips and you'll save 20% off by using the coupon code RVTIPS. The next thing I wanna cover is tire essentials. Unsafe tires can lead to a lot of problems like accidents, damage to your RV, and injury to you, your family, and others on the road. So let's start with a tire pressure monitoring system, also known as a TPMS. My personal preference and recommendation is anything from TireMinder. We use their A1AS system. It's got a large five inch screen, color, easy to read, 
This system monitors slow leaks, rapid leaks, blowouts, low pressure, high pressure, and high temperature. They make an entire line of TPMS units for all budgets. And something that's really cool that they offer to their customers is once a year, you can request them to send you new batteries for every tire sensor that you have on your RV. Now, at the time of recording this video, it does cost you five bucks for them to send the batteries to you, but as many batteries as you need for the sensors that you have are free, 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 free. free. You'll also wanna pick up a reliable tire pressure gauge and some type of air compressor or air pump. I keep Tire Miner's 12 volt compressor in my truck. It will completely fill a class A tire to 100 PSI in 12 minutes. Plus it already comes with a digital tire pressure gauge, which is accurate to plus or minus one PSI. Guys, I cannot stress how important it is to be checking your tire pressure a lot. And the Tire Minder TPMS system makes that process quick and easy. I also keep a backup manual pump in my RV for any reason I might not have access to 12 volt power. While on the subject of tire safety, it's a good idea to pick up a tire protectant. In the past, I've used 303 interior and exterior protectant. I've recently switched over to the 303 Aerospace Protectant. Some people say this is the best stuff on the market. You can use this on rubber, vinyl, plastic, and you can use it on all the trim on your RV as well. Okay, now we're gonna cover all the tools and supplies that we consider essential. Now the tools that you carry are going to depend on your technical ability, your RV, and other things like if you're a part-time RVer or a full-time RVer. Something else to keep in mind is that tools can be used to fix components on your tow vehicle, your RV, and both vehicles. If you're out for a ride in your tow vehicle and you need tools, those tools are obviously doing you no good if they're packed up in the RV. Now, in the interest of saving time, I am going to move through this section pretty quickly, but you don't have to take notes. Every tool and supply that we talk about will be listed down below in the video description in the same order that it's mentioned in this video. These are all the tools and supplies that we keep with us on the road. A half inch breaker bar and something to note, the lug nuts on your wheels may not be the same size lug nuts holding your spare tire on your RV. So you're gonna to wanna to walk around the RV and check everything so you know you have all the right sizes. It's also important to have a nice 3 8 inch socket set. I keep this DeWalt socket set in my truck. I always keep six different tapes with me. Number one, a turn -a tape and a roller in case I have to make roof repairs. Electric tape, duct tape, masking tape in case I need to make any seal repairs on the outside of the RV. I carry two types of Teflon tape. One is your standard plumber's Teflon tape and the other one is yellow Teflon tape. This is used on propane fittings and will come in handy if you have a propane leak. And since we just mentioned electric tape, make sure to carry a good set of wire cutters and a razor knife. I carry a hammer and a rubber mallet. Just in case there's any plumbing repairs I need to make, I carry a set of PEX crimpers along with some PEX shark bite fittings. You also might want to stock a couple feet of extra PEX pipe just in case you need to cut a new piece. Now, if you need to make a roof repair and you're not going to use a turn -a tape, you're going to use some type of lap seal and make sure that you have a caulking gun as well. I also carry an extra hitch pin, an extra coupler pin, and the socket for the tongue jack. In case I lose power, this is how I'll manually crank my tongue jack. An extra bag of just some random nuts, bolts, screws, and washers, zip ties, and a couple different ratchet straps pliers, needle nose pliers, and an adjustable wrench, channel locks, vice grips, and I also keep a tape measure with us. Obviously, screwdrivers are common sense and something we should all have in our RV, but it's a good idea to peek around your RV and see what type of screws the manufacturer put in your RV. You might find some screw heads that are uncommon, like the square bit, so getting a screwdriver kit with an assortment of bits may be your best option. Just as we mentioned the rubber gloves earlier, it's also a good idea to have work gloves on hand. I keep a pair in my truck and also a pair in my RV. Pick up a voltmeter. You'll need one of these to do any type of electrical diagnostics while you're on the road. It goes without saying, but flashlights could also be a lifesaver in many situations. And also consider getting your a headlamp. This will allow you to keep your hands free if you're working in the dark. Even if you don't hike, a backpack allows you to grab a few important items you may need to take somewhere with you in case of a number of different emergencies. We all have a lot of electronics with us these days, so I picked up one of these battery organizers so I can stay stocked full of all the batteries I may need in my RV. A five gallon bucket can be used for a lot of different things in an RV. You can cover your tongue jack with it. You can use it as a seat if you need to work on something that's low. You can carry firewood in it. You can also use it to access the water in your water tank if your water pump fails. And you could use it to put out campfires. If you don't have a hydraulic leveling system, leveling ramps have become pretty popular over the last couple of years. I use the CarmTech leveling ramps. I've used them on soft ground, hard ground, along with the anti-slip mats and have had no problems with them. Fuses are 
important to have as well. It's a good idea to look through your RV and see what type of fuses you'll need and either get a fuse kit or stock a bag full of extra fuses. Now, a few people may disagree with me on this one, but I consider a ground mat essential. Now, there are some times that we don't use our ground mat if we have a concrete pad, but if you have a dirt or grass pad, it will save you a lot of time cleaning, especially on rainy days. If you don't already have one, pick up a hose nozzle in case you need to spray something off. Even with a hydraulic leveling system, or leveling ramps, it's still a good idea to keep some wood blocks with you. You can put wood blocks underneath your tongue jack, underneath your stabilizer jacks, you can put them under your steps to increase the surface area so they don't sink into the ground. Whether they're wooden blocks you're cutting yourself or pre-made plastic blocks that you purchase, these will come in handy in a couple different situations. I highly recommend picking up the Max Hall rubber wheel chalks. These are inexpensive, heavy duty, they won't blow away or crack like plastic chalks, and they'll last you a lifetime. If you RV with pets, don't forget your poop bags. If you're familiar with the channel, you've probably heard me talk about this next product a lot. It's Bowshield T9. This is an amazing lube that you can use on the majority of lube points on your RV. I'll also carry an extra tube of all-purpose grease along with an all-purpose cleaner for the interior. You may need to replace an exterior bulb on your RV, so don't forget to bring some marker bulbs and brake light bulbs. Pack a good set of jumper cables, and if you camp remotely, it might be a good idea to think about buying a jumper pack. I always have an electric drill with us, and if you have manual crankdown style stabilizer jacks, Pick up one of these stabilizer jack bits. It'll make putting your stabilizer jacks down and back up a much quicker process. Don't forget an umbrella and a couple of rain ponchos for obvious reasons. Now, nobody wants to be, but you may be in a situation where you're parked on the side of the road and you need to change a tire or do something to your RV. Keep a reflective triangle marker with us at all times. It's a good idea to have one of these high visibility vests. And I always keep these in my truck so I have access to them before I get out of the truck. A full bottle of mineral spirits, GeoFlex sealer, and plastic scrapers in case I need to make any type of seal repairs on the outside of my RV. Here's an obvious one that I don't see talked about a lot. Utensils, cups, bowls, plates, and it's a good idea to consider plasticware. It's much lighter than glassware, plus you have an RV that's traveling down the road at a cool 65 miles an hour, so it's definitely worth considering something that's not going to break. Even if you drink the water from the campground water connection, it's always a good idea to bring some bottled water with you. Keep all of your checklists on your cell phone. There's a lot of processes and procedures to owning and operating an RV. We're on our seventh year of RVing, and I reference those checklists all the time. This one's common sense, but worth mentioning, make sure you get first aid kits, and also get one for your RV, and keep one in your tow vehicle as well. Make sure you have a copy of your owner's manual, and if for whatever reason you didn't get one with your RV, go online and download the digital version. There's a lot of information in here that you may need to access on the road. A fire extinguisher is also something you may not have gotten with your RV, and if that's the case, I would pick up at least a two and a half pound ABC fire extinguisher. And if you do have a fire extinguisher in your RV from the manufacturer, it probably looks something like this. To test it out, just push this button down, and if it doesn't immediately pop back up, it's time to replace it. In case you need to change a flat tire on your RV, a bottle jack is probably the most popular jack among RVers, and the big red 10-ton Torn is probably the most popular choice of bottle jack. Every RVer should also carry an extension cord. Okay, if you're not planning on using an electronic leveling indicator system, you will need a standard level. Now I'm old school and still use a standard 24 inch level. It's just personal preference. I know a lot of RVers who love the electronic systems, but if you don't have a hydraulic leveling system, you're gonna need one of these two items. While x chocks are not essential to RVing, I cannot speak highly enough of this product. They really do a good job of adding stability, specifically horizontal stability, to your RV by locking the wheels. If you camp when it's cold at campgrounds that don't charge you for electricity, pick up an electric heater. These will quickly pay for themselves with the amount of money you save on propane. So the next thing I wanna cover is both an essential item and a process, and I don't think it's mentioned enough, but you wanna be checking the operation of your emergency windows on a pretty regular basis. And if you camp with children, you wanna teach them how to use these emergency windows. I saw a comment from one of our viewers on another video, and they said to throw a blanket over this windowsill to make X 
exiting a little bit safer and easier. And I think that's a great suggestion. Emergency windows like this one in the bedroom can be quickly covered with your bedspread. And remember to keep blankets within arm's reach of other emergency windows. Remember, RV essentials are not one size fits all. So if there's something that you carry that was not mentioned in this video, please help out the RV community and leave a comment down below. And one more time, every item that we mentioned today in this video is down below in the video description if you need to pick something up. Now that you have a good idea of RV essentials, you can check out this video up here. It's gonna teach you everything you need to know about maintaining a black tank. This video up here is gonna show you how to clean your air conditioner coils. This video down here is a video about some general RV life hacks. And this link down below is to all of our video playlists. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you soon.